Hey, you just tapped and dropped in one of the most amazing sermons on the net today. Welcome to CNBC. Get ready to have your spirit uplifted and prepare to dive into God's Word. Enjoy today's broadcast. Well, good morning. I've got a little display up here of salt. I did not realize how many kinds of different salt there is in the world. I have Himalayan pink salt. I have good old Wharton's regular table salt, iodized. Iodine is put into this. It's a necessary chemical for us. Did you not know that? But they do that to the salt. You can get it without it. This is one of my wife's favorite, at least it is for mine, especially in the wintertime. This is canning salt. Now, all you ladies that have canned know exactly what canning salt is for. You've got to have it with all the stuff like green beans and, and uh, tomatoes and my wife says he's in squ uh, squash. Uh, if you look on the label in the store of your canned vegetables, there will be an item called salt in it. Then there's sea salt, iodized and uniodized, if you get it. There's rock salt, which we uh, thought we had a bag around here, but I think we used it up with the weather this last year. I found out there are over 50 different kinds of salt in this world. Now think about this. The ocean covers 75% of our planet, and what's in it? Salt. The Dead Sea in Israel, where Sodom and Gomorrah is at the very tip of the Dead Sea, there's a huge salt field and salt mine. Matter of fact, it was part of the industry of Sodom and Gomorrah to sell salt. Salt was a very valuable commodity uh, in that day, and it is today. Simple formula, NaCl2, salt. What's that got to do with us? Well, Jesus referred to it over there in Matthew, and I think that's the, uh, I was trying to think what passage that was. Kick it up there, Mary. 5.13, thank you. In Matthew 5.13, he refer, uh, refers to us being, are you ready for this? Salt of the earth. Salt of the earth. What did Jesus mean by that? He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father. As we look at being the salt of the earth today, help us to understand how that it implicates to us our mission and our job here upon the earth. For truly we need to be the salt of the gospel, the one that gives and also encourages through the gospel. Let us learn how to do that today as we prepare to become outreach within our church and community that we might be salt right where we are. Bless your word as it goes forth, touching hearts and changing lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In a few weeks, we're going to be doing the study on the three circles. So Tom and I are getting together this afternoon to kind of plan this out. It's a method by which you can encounter individuals on a daily basis in an ordinary conversation and begin to witness to them. Now, what it's going to take is a little uh, courage on your part and get out of your comfort zone to be ready to do that. The average Christian, get this now, the average Christian has never witnessed to one person. You know what that tells me? We're dropping the ball. We're missing out. We're not given that water of life that we're supposed to be doing. We're not being the salt of the earth. Now, when it says you are the salt of the earth as Christians, 
We should be bringing healing to people through the gospel. Over in Acts 16, verse 31, or 30 through 31, it says, And he brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. This was the jailer, of course, that was keeping them pinned up, Paul and Silas and several of the, the disciples, or the witnesses. And there was an earthquake that finally loosened everything in that jailhouse, and they could have easily escaped, but Paul kept them there. And when the jailer came in and he saw that they had not escaped, his immediate question was, share with me what you know. What must I do to be saved? You see, the jailer would have paid for the penalty of those that had escaped. His life was forfeit. And when he walked in there and saw them still there, he wanted to know why they had stayed and how he could experience the same thing. That's the kind of people we need to be. We need to be the people that are steadfast where we are in our belief and that we share with love the gospel of Jesus Christ. We need to be able to have the power uh, to bring salt to the, of the earth as Christians, we should bring healing to people and to the broken heart. In John eleven twenty five, 25, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall leave. Who did he say that to? You remember? Martha and Mary. I am the resurrection and the life. We need to tell people about Jesus' resurrection. Over in Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 9 says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth and believe in thine heart that Jesus Christ raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Jesus said, I'm the resurrection and the life. That's what we're supposed to be sharing. People think, get hung up on the fact, well, I don't know all the scriptures. I don't know how to, how to uh, engage people into that. Folks, all we need to do is tell them what Jesus has done for us. Share our salt. We're the salt of the earth. I remember a little community that we lived in, Little Withers Bill, population 89, including three hound dogs. And they came to church. They were some of the best bass singers we ever had. I remember in that little community when somebody ran out of some ingredient they were baking with, you could go to the neighbor and get a cup of it, whether it's flour or salt or sugar or whatever. We were willing to share. Why? Because we are a part of the same community. We cared about each other. We were close. Folks, that's what the church needs to be today. You need to be close. We need to be a community of sharers, not just with each other, but with others outside our boundaries. We need to help the broken heart. We need to give encouragement to a discouraged heart. In John 20, 19, it says this, Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, when the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace, be still. The salt that we have can bring encouragement to a discouraged person. You say, how is that possible? Just how can I give someone encouragement? By acknowledging, first of all, their worth. That they are worth our time. That they are worth our conversation. That we're willing to put the phones down and shut them off and talk talking to one another. We've become a generation of texters. You can text anything on the phone. And yes, we even have FaceTime on that phone. But there's nothing like sitting down with somebody and looking across the table at them, sharing the Word of God. It's something that's absolutely missed in our society today. How many of you all remember the neighbors coming over and sitting on the front porch and having a glass of tea and discussing things? Been a long time, hasn't it? I remember it. I remember a lot of times our community gathered together and 
about three different porches around there. We had a great time with each other. I got to know my friends. I knew the ones that I could trust because we were face to face. We can also share salt that would change an indifferent heart. Do you remember Thomas, the disciple who said to the other disciples when Jesus had already visited them and they told him about it? Until I have taken my finger and put it into his hands or into his hide, I will not believe. Even though he had the witness around him, they were going to find people that are just going to be very difficult to cause them to believe. Until later, when Jesus showed up again, and Thomas was there. And when Thomas saw Jesus, Jesus said, come. Thrust your hand into my hand. Put your hand into my side. Did you read the verse very carefully? He didn't do it. He simply fell on his knees and said, My Lord and my God. Some have said seeing is believing, but folks, blessed is he who believes and yet does not see. And those are people that we need to work with very Cautiously, it may take us a little while to get them one, but that's all right. When we have Christ, we will be able to heal the broken-hearted people of the world. Salt is for preserving. I was trying to think of anything that I've eaten lately that didn't have salt in it, and I can't think of it. Everything we have has salt in it because it needs to be preserved. But do you know what else I found out? Salt can kill weeds. You can use salt and water and Dawn dish liquid and mix it up, and it is a weed killer that will not cause problems to your animals other than just a little soapy mouth. Salt destroys as well as preserves. But what it does is that it destroys at the root level. You don't have to worry about going back and deal with it. That tells me that salt through Jesus Christ, destroys sin. Because sin is what's the root problem of people's lives today. And we need to get to the root of the problem, and the only way to do that is to share the salt that we have through Jesus Christ. We'll go down and destroy the root of the sin. It preserves. As Christians, we will likewise be preserved. Now, you may disagree with me about this, but that's fine. You can die wrong. The truth is, once you're saved, you're always saved. I know that there are others that teach something different. But according to the scripture, God, and I'll give you a list of a hundred scriptures that show this. When you have accepted Jesus Christ and he has come into your life through the power of the Holy Spirit, he says that you cannot ever be lost from me. God will not allow you to be taken away. In John, it tells me that he's got a double handhold on us. God's, we we're in the hand of Jesus, and God's got Jesus and us in his hand. And he said, you will never be taken out of my hands. God is not an Indian giver. He doesn't give us salvation and then take it away. It doesn't happen that way. And the salt of the gospel is what preserves us. Now, that doesn't mean that we just need to go out and do anything we want to do. That does not happen with a good Christian. A good Christian is going to obey his master. And Jesus has given a guideline for us to follow in our lives. We are preserved. We are ready for that coming again. I'm looking forward to that coming again. And I'm going to praise the Lord when he comes. We're all going to be shouting when that trumpet sounds. I did read, though, you have to be careful about that. What I read here the other day about a group of folks that were meeting in this church council. And the youth director, Cody, went to sleep. So they all quietly got up, took a shirt off or some piece of the clothing, and left it on the chair and then quietly walked out. And the music director went and got a trumpet and blew it. I thought, man, that's a rough church to be in. 
That would shake you up, wouldn't it? We all are looking for Jesus to come. But are we all prepared? That's the question we've got to answer for ourselves. Preserving will keep you in time of temptation. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, No temptation is, uh, has overtaken you except as one is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make the way of his escape that you may be able to bear it. I've had people ask me, well, Lord, the temptations that I'm dealing with, how can he give them to me? The Bible says that God has never tempted anyone. So the temptation has to be coming from another source. But he always gives us an escape route. When Satan tempts, God's got an escape route. And it's through his word that we can escape those temptations. Challenge Satan with the word of God. The Bible says he will flee from you. Salt preserves us and will help us in times of trial. For 2 Timothy 2, 12 says, If we endure, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. There have been many that have been placed into trials. Paul overcame those trials. We too can tell others also that they can come over those trials. I've tried to explain to some folks how God can help them in those trials. They even try to resist that knowledge. Folks, that tells me that there's a real issue in their lives. But the truth is, God can help us in those times of trials. He will help us in time of disappointments. Romans 8, 28 says, And we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are the called according to His purpose. We can deal with disappointments. We can deal with even treachery from our friends because of that. God will give us the way. He will help us in times of sickness. There was no one else that dealt with sickness more so than Job did. Job 1, 21 through 22 says this, Naked I came from my mother's womb, naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin nor charge God with wrong. He can help us in times of sickness. I have seen folks in sick situations, in cancer, dying, literally, close to their last breath, singing praises to God. He will help us even in the most dire circumstances of our lives. As Christians, we are to help and encourage others. God helps us, so we will help others. Now, there's also a perversion. But if salt has lost its savor, it then is good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under by man. Salt, does it lose its favor, flavor? Yes, it does. Over a period of time, but it takes a lot. You can wash salt out and let it recrystallize and the flavor is gone. What good is it? You know, a lot of foods have to have salt. I don't know about you, but my eggs have to have salt in the morning. My potatoes and that butter has to have salt in the morning. Whenever I eat potatoes, I want salt. Little pepper on top too. And who could eat tomatoes without salt? I used to take a salt shaker out to the garden with me whenever we got time for tomatoes. We ate out there as kids, we'd eat tomatoes out in the garden, but we had our salt shaker with us. Salt is absolutely necessary to add taste, but it's also necessary to preserve things in that will later on be used. The method of salting down meats for a long time was the only way that it allowed people to keep meat for a long time until they came up with the freezers, the freeze-dry abilities. But salt was absolutely necessary. Matter of fact, I remember in November, we would kill hogs. And my dad, grandpa, and them would be there with their seasoning and salt and put it on the hands and all the meats. And then they'd take it to the smokehouse. And then the next month, we would pig out. Because it was so good. But it kept it safe. 
Why? Salt just has that ability. We have to be careful about losing our testimony. If we lose our flavor, we've lost our testimony. So Lot went out and spoke to his son-in-laws who had married his daughters and said, Get us out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his son-in-law, he seemed to be joking. You see, Lot had lost his witness. He lived in a terrible place and accommodated the people. He did not stand for what he believed, but literally let them do whatever they were going to do. Even when the angels came and stood at the door, he let them in and said, don't touch those men, you can have my daughters. Folks, I never could understand that. That place was so wicked that he was willing to give up his daughters to that wickedness. Lot lost his witness. He had no influence over the sinners in Sodom. Matter of fact, they said to him, are you ju- are now going to be judge of us? Losing respect for God in Genesis 19, 26, it says, but his wife looked back behind him and she became a pillar of salt. When you lose respect for God, he's going to take you home. He's going to move the hedge of protection. She was disobedient. She turned around. God had told him, leave, don't look back. What did looking back mean? That she still desired that. And the desire in her life was so great for that lifestyle rather than God. And she turned around. She became a pillar of salt. And she was still there at Jesus' time because Jesus said to his disciples, remember Lot's wife? In the translation it comes, in the actual Greek, it literally means, remember Lot's wife? She's still there. You've seen her. Lost respect for God. There are many today that have lost respect for God because of some incident or situation in their life which has caused them to decide to hate God or to blame God for something that's happened to them. They've lost all kinds of respect for Him. And folks, let me tell you something. They'll pay for it. Just as Lot's wife did. You can lose dedication. Now here's where a lot of controversy comes about this. Can a Christian sin? Yes. But John also tells me that we have an advocate. First John tells me that. And that advocate is Jesus Christ. And if we'll claim and return to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Over in 2 Timothy 4.10 it says this, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, it has departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for Galilea, and Titus for Dalmatia. Now, it wasn't all three of those that had forsaken him, it was Demas. Demas gave up on the mission. But you remember, John Mark also gave up on the mission. And later on, Barnabas restored John Mark. And later on, Paul said, send John Mark to me. He is useful to me at this time. There is forgiveness amongst Christians when Christians fall and fail. But remember that the reason we fall is because we've lost our dedication. You can return and you can regain that same healing power through the word of Jesus Christ. As long as there are dedicated Christians in this world, there is salt. There is an influence to the people of this world, and there is hope. I really believe that when the rapture comes, is when you're going to see chaos break loose on this earth. Somebody has said to me, they believe that there is an individual that's the restrainer. I really believe it's the church that's the restrainer. That keeps back the horde of satanic power. I believe it's the praying Christians, the ones that are dedicated to Him that continue the work, the ones that continue to share the salt that they have. 
that's holding back the chaos of this world. Folks, I want you to know it's coming. And I believe that if you are going to go with the Lord, you need to be prepared by knowing who Jesus Christ is. When that trumpet sounds, the question you're going to have to ask is, will I be ready and will I be able? What about you? Salt of the, of the earth comes after you've accepted Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit then brings that power into your life to be that kind of salt to the world. So Christians, if you are not being the salt, you need to start. If you are being the salt, continue on. Keep your flavor. And that salt means that when we add a little flavor, it means that we also give that encouragement to those new ones that are coming along. If you don't know Jesus, you need to know Him today. Thanks for joining us here today. We hope that you enjoyed the message and it made an impact in your life. Hey, you want to make sure and visit with us on the web at mycmbc.us. Also, be sure and stop by our Facebook page and follow the ministry of Pro Mountain Baptist Church. You can find it at facebook.com forward slash Pro Mountain Baptist. Tune in next week for another amazing message. Have a great week. Thank you.